We're now going to talk about line integrals in R2. So a line integral is an integral over a parameterized curve. So let C be a parameterized curve. So remember, what does that consist of? That means we have an interval, say from A to B, and a typical point in this interval we'll call T, and this is getting mapped by some function R to a curve in the xy plane. So say this is R of A, and this is R of B, and some point on this curve here, this will be R of T, which is the point x of t comma y of t. I think of it as a vector. Okay. Um, now, I want to integrate things over this curve. Now, really, these should probably be called curve integrals. I did not make up this technology, this terminology. Um, they're, so they're called line integrals. So there are three different kinds of line integrals over C. So the first is integral over C of f ds, where f is a function defined on C. So this is called integration with respect to arc length, with respect to arc length. Okay. Um, the second is you can have integral with respect to x or with respect to y, integral over c of f dx or integral over c of f dy. And the third is you can have the integral over c of f dot dr, where f is a vector field. Okay, and these, these three integrals are quite different um, objects. And they have different properties, different definitions, and different purposes. So it might be a little confusing at first, but I'm going to carefully explain them one at a time, and we'll understand what, what they are. And so we'll start with integration with respect to arc length. So this is probably the most intuitive of the three kinds of integrals. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our parameterizing interval and divide it up into a bunch of subintervals. So if a equals t0 is less than t1 is less than da, 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 up to tn, which is b. And let's let's say these are equal. It's not really necessary, but that makes it a little simpler. So we'll say delta t equals ti minus ti minus 1 is b minus a over n. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> this interval is getting mapped to a curve in the xy plane. So when we divide up the parameterizing interval, we're also dividing up the curve into subcurves, and these may have varying lengths. Okay, so, so maybe this is the point R of Ti, which is x of Ti comma y of Ti over here. And maybe this point is R of Ti minus 1, which is x of Ti minus 1 comma y of Ti minus 1. Okay, and then there's a little vector which goes between them. So let's let's look at that with under magnifying glass. Okay, so here's here's our piece of curve. 
So here's R of T on minus one, which is X of T I minus one, comma Y of T I minus one. Then here's R of T I, which is X of T I, Y of T I. And here we have this, this vector, which tells us how much we're going between these two points. So let's call this vector delta xi comma delta yi. Right? So that's the displacement of this little piece of the curve. And we're going to define delta s to be the length of this vector. So it's going to be the square root of delta xi squared plus delta y i squared. I should call this delta s i because it's going to depend on i. Okay? And this is the length of the vector r of t i minus r of t i minus 1. Now I can define the integral. So we define the integral over c of f d s to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of, well, I need a sample point here, so I'm going to pick some sample point on um, ti star in the interval from ti minus 1 to ti. So I'm going to have f of r of ti star times delta si. Okay, so that's the definition. And for practical purposes to compute this, you can check that, in fact, the integral over C of FDS is the integral from A to B of F of R of T times the length of R prime of T dt. Um, the, um, the idea is that um, because delta si is a square root of xi squared plus, sorry, of delta xi squared plus delta yi squared, in the limit sort of heuristically you're going to get dx squared plus d, dy squared. Um, that's going to give you this r prime of t. Um, <clears throat> so example, um, we know that if we integrate over c the function 1 with respect to arc length, then we're going to recover the formula we have before for um, the length of the curve, because we're just going to get so f is going to be equal to 1. This is going to be the square root of x prime squared plus y prime squared. So we're going to get the length of c. Um, more generally, um, if we have some other function f, then one way you can think of what we're doing here, I uh, need a new page to draw the picture, So here's our curve in the xy plane, and we can sort of look at the graph of f over this curve. Okay? So it's over this curve, but varying in height. So this is a point xy0 on the curve, and this is the point xy f of xy. Um, and then if f is positive on c, then the integral over c of f ds is the area under the graph of f over c. I mean, if you think about the, the definition, let me just write this again. So the definition 
was that the integral received f ds is the limit that then goes to infinity of sum from i equals 1 to n of f of r of t i star delta s i. So what does that mean in terms of this picture? Well, let's say that this point is, um, is um, r of t i, and this point is r of t i minus 1. Then the length of this little segment here is delta s i. Um, and then we're going up to a height. So this, then we pick some sample point in here. Um, so what we're basically doing is we're taking this little piece of the region under the graph and we're approximating it by a rectangular strip and taking the area of that rectangular strip. So we're approximating the region under this graph by rectangular strips um, and adding up their areas and then in the limit we get the area under the graph. And an application, for example, is that, um, let's do another page here. So suppose that the curve C is a wire with mass density rho. Then the mass of the wire is, let's call this m, is the integral over c of rho ds. So if the mass density is constant, then you're just going to get that constant times the length of the wire. If it's not constant, then it will be weighted more where it's higher. And then the center of mass of the wire There's the point x bar comma y bar, where x bar is the average value of x, so it's 1 over the total mass of the integral of x rho ds. And y bar is the average value of y, so it's 1 over the total mass of the integral of y rho ds. Right, so that's, that's integration with respect to arc length. And there's one really important property of integration with respect to arc length, which is that the important property which is the integral over C of F ds does not depend on the parameterization. as long as you don't back, backtrack. So in other words, here, here's your curve. If I just go along the curve like that, I'm not, I'm not allowed to do something like this, where I would sort of go along the curve, and then go back, and then go forward again, and then go back some more and go forward again. I have to just sort of go always in one direction along the curve from the start to the end. And if you do that, then all such parameterizations will give you the same value of the integral with respect to arc length. So it really just depends on the curve you see in the plane and not on how it's parameterized. So I'll explain why that's true in the next lecture segment.